The next step in the superpave mix design process is to calculate the volumetric properties of our trial asphalt mixture to determine whether or not our trial aggregate blend is acceptable or not. For this example, we'll be dealing with the data shown on this slide. Our trial asphalt recall content recall was 5.7%. Our measured theoretical maximum specific gravity was 2.048. Our aggregate bulk specific gravity is 2.558, and the table below presents our compaction trial results. The first volumetric property that we will calculate is air void content. We will use our results in equation 15 to calculate the air void content. Before we do, I'd like to show you where equation 15 came from. Recall from the lecture our air void content definition shown above the phase diagram. It's 100% times the ratio between our air void volume and our bulk mixture volume, VMB. We can rewrite VA in this equation based on VMM and VMB. VA is equal to the difference between our bulk mixture volume and our voidless mixture volume. Therefore, we can rewrite our percent air definition is equal to the ratio between VMB and VMB minus our VMM over our VMB times 100%. The first term in this equation cancels out to give us 1. The second term here multiplied by 100%, so if we combine that in, is our percent GMM equal to our GMB over our GMM times 100. We will calculate the air void content of our mixture at end design using equation 15. For our example, our percent GMM at end design was 96.3. Therefore, our air void content is 3.7%. The next property that we will calculate is our percentage of voids in mineral aggregate. This is calculated using equation 16 within superpave mix design. Equation 16 was derived from the equation shown above the phase diagram, which shows that VMA is equal to the ratio between our voids in mineral aggregate and our bulk mixture volume. We can rewrite this definition in terms of our bulk volume and our bulk aggregate volume. So we can rewrite VMA is equal to the difference between our bulk mixture volume and our bulk aggregate volume over our bulk mixture volume. If we look at this equation, we can see this portion will go to 1. Um, but we still need to solve for our VSB and VMB in terms of equation 16. Our VSB is defined uh, at, relative to our aggregate bulk specific gravity as follows. It's our mass of our aggregate divided by uh, our bulk specific gravity of our aggregate times the density of water and our bulk uh, mixture volume is equal to our total mass of our mixture divided by our GMB, our bulk mixture specific gravity, times the density of water. Going back to this equation, we see that we need the ratio between these two. So if I look at these two equations, I see that I'm going to be taking the ratio between our aggregate mass and total mass. This is equal to PS. Therefore, I see that I can rewrite my voids in mineral aggregate as equal to 100 minus 100 times uh, PS times my bulk uh, specific gravity over my aggregate bulk specific gravity. And I see that the density of water uh, component will cancel out of the equation. Uh, if you look at the equation uh, 16 at the top of this slide, 
you see that we're very close, except for you'll notice that in place of GMB, we've represented this using uh, percent GMM times our GMM. These two quantities are equal. Next, we will calculate our percentage of voids in mineral aggregate using equation 16. First, we need to calculate PS. PS is our aggregate content by total mass of our mixture. Recall that our trial binder content was 5.7%. Therefore, our PS is going to be 1 minus our trial asphalt content, which is equal to 1 minus 0.05 7, which gives us 0.943. Now we'll use this within equation 16. So our VMA is 100 minus our percent GMM at end design, which was 96.3, multiplied by our GMM, which was 2.408 multiplied by PS, 0 0.943, divided by our GSB, which is 2.558. Uh, this gives us a void in mineral aggregate content of 14.51%. Our next step is to calculate the corrected binder content. Our initial trial binder content did not give us 4% air voids at end design. Our ultimate goal in superpaved mixed design is to achieve 4% air voids at the design compaction level. If our air void content is lower than 4%, we will have susceptibility to rutting. If the air void content is higher than 4%, we may have susceptibility to cracking. Therefore, achieving this air void content is critical. Based on our initial air void content at our initial trial asphalt content, we can estimate what the asphalt content should be to give us 4% air voids. We do that using equation 17 on the slide. Our initial trial asphalt content was 5.7%. Therefore, we take 5.7 and we subtract 0.4 times 4 our target air void content minus what we measured at our trial asphalt content. In our case, this was 3.7%. This gives us a corrected trial asphalt content of 5.58%. Now we will estimate the percentage of voids in mineral aggregate VMA at our corrected asphalt content. We do this using equation 18. You see that there is a constant C in equation 18 that depends on our air void measurement made at our initial trial asphalt content. C is equal to 0.1 if VA at our initial trial asphalt content was less than 4% and 0.2 if our air void content was greater than 4%. We fall into the first category, so our C value will be 0.1. Therefore, we can calculate our uh, estimated VMA based on our initial VMA, 14.51% plus our constant C of 0.1 times for our target air void content minus what we measured at our initial trial asphalt content, which was 3.7%. This gives us an estimated voids and mineral aggregate at our corrected asphalt content of 14.54%. Our next step is to estimate our voids filled with asphalt at our corrected asphalt content. We do this using equation 19, which is equivalent to the equation above the phase diagram. That is because our voids filled with asphalt is equal to our voids in mineral aggregate minus our air void content. So we see in this equation, we can calculate uh, our estimated based on 100, multiplied by our estimated VMA, which we just estimated to be 14.54%,
minus our target air void content of 4% divided by our 14.54. This gives us an estimated VMA of 72.5%. Next, we estimate our percent GMM at N initial using our corrected binder content. We do this using equation 20, as shown here, and you can see that the inputs required for equation 20 are our percent GMM that we measured at our trial asphalt content at N initial and our air void content that we measured at our initial trial asphalt content. We'll solve equation 20 for our aggregate trial blend 1. For trial blend 1, we measured that our percent GMM at our trial at our initial trial asphalt content was 87.96 and our air void content was 3.7. This gives us an estimated percent GMM at our corrected binder content of 87.66%. We can estimate our percent GMM value at N max at our corrected binder content using a very similar equation to equation 20. This is equation 21, as shown on this slide, and you'll notice that the only difference between equation 20 and 21 is the replacement of percent GMM at N max from what we had in equation 20 at N initial. We'll calculate the percent GMM at our corrected binder content for trial aggregate blend 1. For trial aggregate blend 1, we, as we measured that our percent GMM at our trial asphalt content was 97.76. And recall that our air void content that we measured at our initial trial asphalt content was 3.7%. This gives us an estimate of our percent GMM at our corrected binder content of 97.46%. Our last asphalt mixture property to calculate is our dust proportion, and we do this at our corrected asphalt content. The dust proportion, abbreviated DP, is calculated using equation 22 shown on this slide. Equation 22 requires P sub 0.075 which is our aggregate content that passes the number 200 or 0 0.075 millimeter sieve and our effective binder content expressed as a mass percentage of our total mixture. We use our gradation data to determine our P.075. Our gradation is shown in this table for trial blend one and we see that our percent passing the number 200 sieve is 4.6%. Our effective binder content, PBE, is a function of how much binder our aggregates absorb. This is related to our effective specific gravity, which we estimated for our trial aggregate blend at the start of the superpaved mix design process. However, once we've prepared a trial uh, asphalt mixture and measured the theoretical maximum specific gravity, GMM, we can calculate the true effective specific gravity using equation three. We see that equation three requires input of our percent by mass of our total loose mixture. This is 100% because our air voids add no mass. Our theoretical maximum specific gravity, which we measured, our binder specific gravity, GB, and our asphalt content given as a percentage by total mass of our asphalt mixture. We'll calculate equation three based on our results of our initial trial asphalt content. For our initial trial asphalt content, our binder content was 5.7% by mass of the mixture. And we measured our theoretical maximum specific gravity to be 2.408. And we're given that our uh, binder specific gravity is 1.03. This gives us a calculation for our effective specific gravity of 2.620. Now that we've calculated our effective specific gravity, we can calculate our effective binder content at our corrected asphalt content. We do this using equation 23, 
as shown on this slide, which we'll calculate for aggregate trial blend one. For our trial blend one, we calculated our uh, aggregate content at our corrected binder content to be 94.3. Uh, we multiply that by our binder specific gravity of 1.03, which we are given, and we multiply that quantity by our effective specific gravity, 2.620, minus our bulk specific gravity of our aggregate, 2.558, and we divide that quantity by the uh, product of our effective specific gravity and our bulk specific gravity. We then add uh, to this product our uh, binder content, which was calculated to be 5.668, uh, which gives us a calculated effective binder content of 4.68%. We now have all the inputs required to calculate our dust proportion using equation 22. Recall that our P2.075 was 4.6% based on our aggregate gradation, and we just calculated our effective binder content to be 4.68, which gives us a dust proportion of 0.98.